All right, it looks like we are good to go on this one. What is up, folks? Um, I'm Johnny Andrews, and I wanted to thank you so much uh, for coming uh, to this, this uh, let's call it a, a, a redo. We had some uh, technical issues on that last one. I must apologize for that. And so uh, what this has given us, uh, given me the opportunity to do is actually make this even better than the last time. So we are going to be breaking down some really, really awesome information. A lot of this stuff is not uh, conventionally available in the publishing industry. And so you're gonna get to see how a lot of things work and how to put all this stuff together uh, in a way that you can dramatically increase, uh, you could grow your audience and grow not just an audience, but an engaged audience very, very quickly. And this is, uh, everything you see tonight is going to be the results of what we've been learning. Uh, running not just 2,000 ads total, but 2,000 ads sometimes per day uh, for authors. Uh, so we've worked with over 500 authors within this specific program and uh, uh, just handing out, being able to grow their platforms and things like that. And so we're going to show you literally start to finish the entire thing. So this is not one of those webinars where it's like, oh, there's going to blow a bunch of fluff and then sell you something. Uh, absolutely not. I am going to show you exactly what we do and then I'm going to sell you something. <laughs> and if you have any questions, you can absolutely email us at uh, support at authorplatformrocket.com. So let's kick this thing off. Uh, very recently, I had emailed our author subscribers. We uh, work with just over 16,000 authors. And the response, well, the question was, what is your biggest hurdle? Like, what are you struggling with the most and how can we help you? And this one, out of all of the responses, this one I thought really nailed it. So I'm going to read it to you really quickly because I think this is, in a nutshell, exactly why we are all here tonight. And what she said is, my biggest question is discoverability. I've spent thousands of dollars to market 13 romance and fantasy books. Uh, and just so you know, this works, what I show you tonight works with every single genre, fiction, nonfiction, whatever. Uh, I try every new thing that hits the market, whether Facebook ads, discount sites, books, bloggers, you name it. I've tried it. I'm still only selling an average of three books a day, sometimes one, sometimes none. I set up for your program. Hopefully it's the magic bullet, which is awesome. And thank you. I think it is too. Um, I'm doing all the right things or so I think. I'm putting out four to six books a year. I'm active on social media. I have great covers. According to my reviews, the books are well written. My books get reviewed incredibly well when they get found. How do I show up against the white noise of all the other books out there and find more readers who will buy my backlist? Boom. That right there sums it up flawlessly. How do you stand out from all the noise out there? And we are going to talk ex about all of that tonight. So this is what we're going to be breaking down. And so this is why the majority of your marketing efforts do not produce the desired results. I know marketing is very difficult. It is very time consuming. It can be very expensive. And then when it doesn't do what you want it to do, it can be overwhelmingly frustrating. And I'm going to show you how to fix all that stuff today because uh, some things have happened in the wild world of advertising that unfortunately many folks are not aware of. And so I'll show you what those are and how to uh, pivot what you're doing so that it works again. How to set up a business that to attract readers who want to buy your books by using what I like to call a bug spray ad that repels those legions of freebie seekers. And I know that uh, there's you know millions and millions and millions of people out there that are you know just on author lists and they're just trying to get all this stuff for free. I'll show you how to fix that problem. Um, the single most important element of your author business that creates discoverability, leverage, and how to use it correctly is a big one. And then at the end, a legal hack that could save you thousands of dollars and potentially years of time executing these strategies. And so we're going to go through all of this stuff and actually quite a bit more tonight. So I'm hoping you have a pen and paper because I was not kidding when I said this is going to be extremely in-depth. And this was awesome. And I, I bring this up not as an income claim because I'm not claiming any income. I am bringing this up because uh, when I received this email, Abby Weeks was an author who sent it. Uh, the podcast that we do is called Author Platform Rocket Now, but it was a it's a rebrand from the Audience Hacker podcast. And uh, what I like here is I owe you a lot. I got my ebook sales up to $100,000 per month after taking up a lot of the paid traffic methods I first heard on your podcast. I am it, it, So the reason I'm bringing this up is because this author was able to get up to $100,000 a month just listening. And I'm going to give you a video. We're going to go into uh, one of you. I'm going to take you into one of my ad accounts. I'm going to show you how to set this stuff up. Literally, like all of these pieces. And so if an author can make hundred grand a month doing just, just listening to me chatter on a podcast, think about what you can do if you implement what you see tonight and hear and experience. All right? So 
this is this this uh, I, I say this because what you're learning tonight can very much transform your business as an author. So I'll give you a quick sort of uh, you know top down version of who I am. Uh, I once again Johnny Andrews. I got started and was crazily struggling in the whole online uh, business thing. I got started roughly about 2004, and then I finally started getting traction uh, toward the tail end of 2006, and within 2000. 7 to 2010, I just was doing great online uh, with my own publishing company. So I've been publishing before Kindle was even real, uh, meaning I was doing things with PDFs, with videos, I was doing how-to courses, all sorts of different things like that. And then uh, in 2010 and 11, I launched a book discovery ecosystem, which was able to reach millions and millions of readers, and that uh, was called I Love Vampire Novels, uh, which has gone on to become either the biggest or one of the biggest paranormal romance sites in the world that connects readers and authors. And since then, I've spun this off, that this same business model off into many, many, many different genre sites uh, that covers tons and tons of stuff. And I've been uh, featured on tons of podcasts, Pat Flynn, uh, Wordslinger, Kevin Tomlinson's Awesome, Rock and Self Publishing, I mean, just to name a couple of these things. And in the tail end of 2015, I founded Author Platform Rocket, uh, just it used to be just an idea, uh, sent out an email to the author's that we were working with at the time. And now we've been able to work with over 16,000 authors and distribute over 3 million subscribers to help build author platforms. And it has been uh, just a wonderful journey. And so if you're one of those folks that we work with, thank you so much. It's been, love to have you and it's been awesome. So this is why it's difficult for most authors to scale and succeed. We're gonna get into the meat of this and I wanna give you a quick sort of view of the industry because this is important. It's important to understand why this has happened and how this has happened so that you could say, oh, this is this makes sense now why I need to make these, these little pivots and probably implement these few things. So old publishing versus today. There's been major paradigm shifts in the publishing world, as you know. Like it began, you know, before 2007 when uh, Amazon launched the Kindle. It was, if you didn't have a, you know, if you weren't published by a publisher, it just probably wasn't going to happen. Then Amazon came along, did that thing, with the Kindle and from probably, I wanna say 2007 to 2012, it was an absolute beautiful time. It was the, alg the book discovery algorithm was able to help authors so much and it's because there weren't that many people doing it in, the, in those moments. It was actually quite easy to get noticed. All you needed to have was a good series of books and know who your readers were and you could very easily with uh, you know basic advertising and the love of the Amazon ecosystem, you could get discovered and do quite well for yourself. And then especially 2011 to 12, the, that was the gold rush. That, that time was crazy, it was really, really amazing. Uh, unfortunately, that has long gone. Uh, today, and this uh, was uh, Publishers Weekly in October 20th, 2017, over 786,000 self-published ISBNs in one year. And so that's over 65,000 new titles every month, and I'm willing to bet that we are well over a million at this point, and it shows no sign of slowing down whatsoever. So it's very, very important that you keep in mind, that, that, that you understand this, that a lot of what you as an author may be seeing or learning or you know having other authors tell you to do, there was a time period where it, it was possible but that time period is long gone and it's time to, you know, we need to evolve our tactics and our strategies. And so the problem here is that the volume of these authors and these books really just hitting these virtual shelves on a monthly basis, this drowns out the natural Amazon discovery algorithms ability to help you out for very long. And so this is why even if you see some really good success, that success tends to drop away very quickly is because there's just too many stinking titles. And it used to be, you, as long as you had a good book, you could probably get discovered. Now there is a different uh, methodology to, that you have to follow. And what's cool is it's actually based on old information that still works, but the problem is it's being executed incorrectly. So the bottom line here is if even if you're exclusive to Amazon, so if you're wide or if you're selling through your own site, the problem and the solution, these things are both completely the same for everybody. And like I said, there's too many books being published. You have to take this... You have to take your, your success into your old hands because, unfortunately, the old model of relying on Amazon for all of your needs is no longer viable. Uh, and more and more authors are coming to this conclusion, especially as Amazon makes changes in their algorithms and people who maybe were exclusive uh, suddenly find their page reads dropping through the floor very quickly. You've probably heard of that in the forums and, uh, or in the uh, 
Facebook groups and things like that. So let's look at something here. This is, uh, I want to go over this because it's important to understand the difference between what I call uh, outside versus inside marketing. And so this is talking about how do you get discovered? How do you have people buying your books? Well, the reality is that a lot of authors, they're, they're doing the right thing, but kind of in the wrong places. And so outside marketing, this is a different style of marketing. And so outside would be genre fans who do not know you quite yet, you know, because you haven't pulled them, you haven't pulled them into your sphere. And this is what this looks like. It's like you as a writer are very much in this little bubble. It's like your own little world. And there's all these readers out there that might potentially like you. And so how do you get in front of these people? Now, the traditional methods of, you know, takeovers and uh, parties and, and all the, I mean, there's this, the list just goes on, like blog tours and all these things. Most of that has stopped being effective. And it dropped off fairly quickly just because, you know, uh, that's just what kind of happens a lot of times. But there are very specific things that you can do. There's three things that you can do uh, to really leverage that. But your goal here is to, let me back up one second, your goal is to, br is to uh, attract these people and bring them into your sphere. That is the point of outside marketing. Now, inside marketing is now once they're in your world, inside of your bubble, the, you could start to work them into your core fan group. And this is where your true fans are going to come from. This is where uh, you can then sell these people more of your stuff and really just, uh, you know, really just hook them up with all these awesome things that they want to buy more from you. And so the goal of outside marketing is to bring people in, expose them to the opportunity for books. This is something that in every other industry is called prospecting. It is, this is a fundamental concept that has to be, and we're going to talk a lot about what this prospecting methodology is, because the reality is it's not just about getting people into your, you know, go get an email kind of thing. Not everybody's going to become a fan even after that point. Some are going to select leave, and that's actually a very good thing. And you're going to see why in just a little bit when I talk about those bug spray ads. All right, so just for now, I just want to kind of take a top-down approach. Now, the goal of inside marketing, launch, sell your books, this is where you get your reviews. This is where you engage your fans. They tell their friends, all that kind of stuff. And you've probably heard the concept before of a thousand true fans. A thousand true fans are, you know, that's a great starting point. Now, you know, if you put this stuff into action, you can get a bunch more. So the number one question that we hear is what's the single most important thing to focus on as an author with all of this, this, this just menu of options of things outside of writing your books. We're talking in the, in this, you know, in the world of uh, marketing and what do you do to get discovered? And the answer is really just grow your platform the right way. Uh, because when I say the right way, it used to be that you would focus on your social media platforms like Facebook, like Twitter, you know, um, Instagram and things like that. The problem is Twitter doesn't really do much for most authors, uh, and it took a long time for folks to realize that. Is you know, lots of authors have big followers on Twitter. Twitter is what's called a self-contained ecosystem. People tend to engage with the tweets, but not click so many links or not leave the ecosystem. Now, Facebook, on the other hand, is no longer a social from a business standpoint. This is important. Facebook is really no longer a uh, social media platform. If you are a author, it is a social advertising platform. And that is a massive distinction, massive, massive, massive distinction to make. And it used to be wonderful for everyone. It used to, you know, if you had an author page, you could post something, your fans would see it, they could engage with it. But then of course, once they went public and they had to be profitable, it, that is when all of that started getting throttled down. And now it's a complete pay to play environment, which is not bad. It is that that happens everywhere. Like Google is like that. Uh, Instagram is becoming like that. Facebook has be you know has already become like that. And Twitter just is very ineffective for many reasons. But we won't even get into it. Now that leaves the most vital element of your platform, which is your subscriber base, which is by most authors called the newsletter. And unfortunately, the concept of a newsletter has been grossly blown out of uh, proportion in terms of what it actually should be. And so this is where the, you know, if you're unfamiliar with this, if you're new, uh, this is where, you know, you typically offer the reader something free in exchange for their email, and then you hit them with some messages and see if they can buy a book. It's very basic. Uh, it's a very basic concept. It's like internet marketing 101. The problem is many pieces of this have actually been missed or uh, ignored 
by the majority of authors, mo mo like very much to the pain and suffering of the entire uh, market because what we have to do now is take them from a subscriber and move them into a buyer and then from a buyer into something of a super fan. And here's the one the one important piece that has that you want to keep in mind is this is a daily activity. The growth of your subscriber base is the single most vital element to your entire author business. Without this, you are just not going anywhere. And this is how you need to be doing it daily. You absolutely need to focus on daily activity to grow this thing. And book sites who understand this, BookBub, you probably heard that an email from BookBub can change your life. You would not be wrong. That is very true. They are, they are absolutely amazing. Um, I love vampire novels. This is what we focus on at the core is we grow our subscriber base and then we you know sell advertisements to authors in paranormal romance and let them get exposure. It's been very, very effective. Uh, romance Devoured, My Romance Reads, uh, Amazon. Amazon is like the biggest one out there. Amazon gets this so much that they won't even share your buyer email with you because they want it all to themselves. And that's a very important thing to understand. And that's one of the main reasons uh, we're not going to get too much into that tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's one of the main reasons why a lot of authors are struggling is because they don't have access to the information of people who actually buy their books. However, what Leverage does here, and I'm going to show you how to sidestep that, by the way. There's a really cool methodology that you can use here uh, that allow you to help uh, break things up and you can just focus on people that want to buy your books. So what the reason why email works so well is because unlike social media where a lot of your reach is going to be throttled, once you have this, the newsletter, the, the subscriber base, you can send a message and they will see it. And almost every author that we work with or have spoken to says the same thing. It's like when we ask, what is the number one thing that sells the most books for you? They're like, our email list. That is it. That is exactly it. So if you want to sell books, yes. If you want to request reviews, yes. You want to start a street team, yes. Like all of these things, like to connect, to relate, to move people around, to help grow your other elements, your platform, all that kind of stuff. And this uh, this was from uh, Kevin Tublinson, director of marketing at draft to digital and also a phenomenal author. And what he said about how leverage works, I just sent an email out yesterday with the subject line, have you seen these books? I made twice as much from that email as I did from a similar email at the beginning of April, all because my list is bigger, thanks to you guys. Awesome, thank you, Kevin, he's a great dude. What leverage does, there is no single greater tool for your success as an author. Now, here's the caveat though. It has to be built and maintained correctly. And this is where the breakdown happens. So I think everybody here understands that if you don't have an author newsletter, you're not really going to be in business. It, you're just kind of playing. But what's with the current problem with the newsletters and things like that? So let's look at the power of leverage, for example, just in case. If you're getting about 100 subscribers a month, and I don't know what you're doing to get them, but we'll just say you have about 600 people who know like who know and like your books. So of those 600 people, you're going to have a percentage of them that when you launch something new, they're going to go and buy it. They're going to buy your back catalog. They're going to do all this. And then when you launch another book, what if you have 1,200 at that point? I don't know what your launch schedule is, but think about that. The more you grow this thing, the larger the percentage of people is who will purchase your stuff. And so your goal is to get that leverage. That is the single goal. That is the one. There's two daily rituals in uh, in the life of an author that are absolutely in, just absolutely vital. The first one is to have a daily writing ritual, especially you know fiction. That is the business model: is to put out, is to become prolific. That is how it works. <clears throat> and then the second one, and just as every bit as important as your books, is to have a daily marketing platform building ritual. If you don't. It's going to be a lot of trouble uh, trying to grow your business as an author. So why then? So if all of this is true, and I think everybody here can agree that, that you need a, a subscriber base. You need a fan base. You need to grow your platform. I think that is news that has gotten out from the ether. So, but, the, but, but if this is all true, why are some lists more effective than others? And it's because of this. It's what I call the guess method is not being used by a lot of authors. Take a little sip here. That is grow, engage, sell, and segment. Grow, I think everybody has, uh, you know, that somewhat, they, most authors have the idea. Unfortunately, it's not a daily growth. It's sort of a, when you remember to go and, you know, do something to, to get more subscribers. Engage, there's a lot of attempts at this. I'm going to show you how to do it the right way. 
there's definitely a lot of attempts with this. The unfortunate side effect of some of the choices of engagement is if you give them too much free stuff, they won't buy anything from you. And so if you kill them with kindness, they'll kill your business. Unfortunately, it's, it's very strange. So you do need to sell them something. So engagement and then selling, there is a nice happy medium in there that you can get to. And be, remember, the, the, the purpose of your subscriber base is to sell books. And then segment. This is the piece that out of all of the authors we've worked with, only one was doing this. And this is based on, and I'm going to get more into this in just a second, but this is based off of behavior. What are the people on your list doing? All right. So let's get back to engagement. I'm going to cover all of those things in just a second here. How do you engage? Of course, we're going to sell them stuff, but there should be some sort of little bit of back and forth and things like that. So user-generated ideas. I do this all the time with the authors is I'll send out an email and I'll ask for feedback. Hey, what do you think? What do you need help with this, that, or the other thing? What would you like more of? What would you like less of? I just ask because, you know, I'm not afraid to say I don't know. So you could ask them if you want to do that. Or, and um, what I'm about to show you, I presented this a, uh, a couple years ago, these ideas, and a lot of authors started doing them. And the success rates of people showing up and getting excited about it and engaging with this were really pretty cool. And it, it comes around the concept of like, have like a super fun, and it doesn't have to be weekly, it could be every other week or even every month, uh, but it's some sort of event that you can combine with your books. To, to really make it work. And so here we go. Thirsty Thursday. And all of this stuff is, is very themed, as you could tell. So you ask your readers, and this would be, you know, maybe send an email. It's like, hey, Thirsty Thursday is coming up. I wanted to see, you know, what you folks, uh, what your favorite drinks are, what, you, what you're all making. Uh, and then what you do is you get the information back and you then send them like an autographed copy of your book or something like that because you picked it. And then you make that drink or that photo live. Or something like that. You, so you could combine this. So what's cool is you could take all the elements of your platform and combine it into one big strike. And this is why it's important that you have people not just on your email, but everywhere too. So there's multiple touch points, but the email is the most important. And so say, for example, you could then uh, have them post on their Instagram or you could repost the photos and stuff like that, tag them in them and that kind of thing. Or on Facebook, the same thing. Or you could do a Facebook Live but the trick is that you want to have something that people look forward to. The next one would be Friday Feast. It's the exact same concept, but with food. Ah, and I forgot to mention one thing. You don't want to be selling anything within this context. What you want to be doing is giving away maybe one thing that is really fun, uh, but it's always about your books. It's so like an autographed copy if you can possibly do that. And so what you do is you're just holding the book while you're doing this whole thing. So it's Kind of like those old transporter movies with Jason Statham in them where it, you know, yeah, it was a great action movie, but at the same time, it was all about like how good the car was. And it started off BMW did it, did them at first. They had some shorts that they put online only for a while that were phenomenal. And then what happened was Audi took the same idea and it, you know, it kind of, they took the torch and ran with it like that. But the whole thing was like one big product placement advertisement for that car. And so you want to have the same concept with these. And so once again, wine on Wednesdays, uh, pretty easy stuff, just stuff, things that people can really get into and look forward to. And then story time. Uh, one thing that we do in our ecosystem is we actually allow authors to sort of rent time for a show if they want to do it. And so we have a few who come on pretty regularly and uh, they, you know, they, they read books, they engage the fans. And it's great because a lot of these videos, we've had some of these things, uh, one author did one that I would say it was like three minutes long, but within two days it had been seen by 45,000 people. It was very, very cool. And you could do a lot with this because even if you're, if you, even if you're shy, you don't need to do uh, live video and things like that. I'm just saying the opportunity exists and it doesn't cost you any money. And you can end up getting tons of engagement. You can really grow, grow your platform and you can get people very aware of you as an author and your brand. Now, let's look at the next fu functionality of this. So it's like, that's what you do with them when you're not selling them books. How do you get subscribers now? And so this is what your business should be centered around. Obviously creating books, but outside of that, 100% of this needs to be known as list building. That's sort of the industry term for this thing. It's not newsletter growth, it's list building. And so 
you need to be, and, I, and I'm going to keep saying this, it is a daily activity where you need to be doing this. And I'll show you how you can make that work in just a second. So the reason why it is a daily activity is because of the feast and famine syndrome that plagues every industry that involves selling stuff. What do, what I, mean, what do I mean by that? So feast and famine in any kind, let's say real estate, because you could really tell in that one. There are two phases to the business. There's the prospecting phase where you've got to find people to work with to sell homes or who are looking to buy homes. And so you're prospecting for those people and then you're weeding through them to find the ones who are truly serious and then you, you know, sign them up and then you sell their home and then you get paid. Here's the problem with that. If you're not prospecting while you're going through them and while you're working with them to try to get more clients, you end up having this huge peaks and valleys in your business. And you end up having, you know, there's, there's, you know, it's called feast or famine. It really is. It's because the prospecting leads to the feast, but if you stop the prospecting, it leads to the famine. And the exact same thing applies to authors. If you are not constantly having a stream of people entering the front end, meaning, you know, that big, hey, get my free thing, part of your situation, every single day, you too will experience feast and famine because people are going to unsubscribe. Some people stop responding. Others, you know, just move away. They stop using the email. There's like tons of real world reasons why people would drop off. And you can expect at least a 20% decline per year. It's actually, I think, a lot more than that. And so if you're not constantly feeding the front end there, it's not going to work out so well in the long term for you. So what this does is it helps you stabilize and grow your business by taking daily action on this. <clears throat> now, the reason I say that the number one single best strategy for this is an individual single author giveaway is because it allows you to very much break down uh, the barrier to entry here to, because you, you engage in this really fun get to know you process where they have an opportunity to win extra stuff and it removes the risk to the reader very much so. Uh, but the, the big caveat, this must be dedicated to you. So this is why we don't do multi-author giveaways. Now we have experimented with these in the past. We've done them. Uh, they had some great success, but there was a problem with that is that the, it confuses the readers. Uh, they, you know, they're like, oh, I mean, how many authors is this? And they don't know you individually because your goal is to become front of mind with them when they, whatever they think. So maybe you do sci-fi, horror, zombie apocalypse books. I don't know. But whatever you're doing, if that's what they read, you want them thinking about you, not you plus 20 other people because they won't retain that information. And so that's a big one. So you want to stand out and stay front of mind. And the other problem is, you know, a lot of authors, you know, because uh, all the other all the authors are promoting simultaneously. Many of those authors have sourced their lists from some of the no-no places that I'm going to talk about here, and so you end up getting like this ocean of freeloaders, which, like I said, we'll we'll talk about how to get rid of those people pretty quickly. But this is what they look like when we run them. Uh, these things are, you know, pretty well laid out. They're mobile optimized. Uh, we've done them in tons of different genres. Uh, you know, working with lots of different folks. But you can see they all have the same format and they're super, super cool. The reason we like them so much is because they people can't just subscribe to them. They actually have to do stuff to get in there. So here's how to structure this. All right, so we've covered the why. Now we've covered, we're starting to talk about the how to and I'll get more into the specifics in just a second. But you want it to be all about your books with what we call an enhancer. And that would be something like a gift card or a Kindle, and it should be related to reading. You don't want to be giving away iPads or cars. You know, if you have enough money to give away a car, that's super cool. You get a ton of subscribers, but n most of those subscribers will be there for the car, not you. And autograph physical copies is also great. You know, even at Amazon gift card, which is a really awesome enhancer, uh, if, it's, if, if they're only getting books in this situation, that could be very cool too. And so when available, if you say, for example, have like t-shirts or mugs or anything, give that away too. Those things are great. Uh, bookmarks we found do not typically uh, make a huge draw, but that's okay. And then offer something, you know, like a uh, nothing, never do like a $10,000 or $2,000 or anything like that. Keep it like 25 to 100 bucks, maybe even 15. It's totally fine. But this is a big one. You need to make sure that you have a digital everybody wins prize because you don't want people to join your, you know, to subscribe and not get something and feel disappointed if they don't win. 
You never want to give people the sense of disappointment at all, ever. You want to be able to have them go, oh, this is awesome. Thank you. I'd love to read this. And you want to give them either a free short or a prequel. Or if you're in Kindle Unlimited, you can give them, I believe it's 10% of your book. Like that would be the absolute bare minimum that you should be doing. But the goal here is, and I can personally attest to this, the, the giving away of a free book is an excellent way to start getting new readers. Obviously, not everybody reads it. That's perfectly fine. That's to be expected. But even with the authors that I like the most, almost all of them, I found them through a free book and I downloaded it. I read it. I was like, wow, that is awesome. And then I went on to buy everything that they ever wrote. And that is not abnormal. That's a pretty normal way uh, for lots of people to go. And then what you want to do is you want to promote it in the correct places. We'll get into more of this promotion here in just a second. But you don't want to do like generic giveaway sites because what we're about to get into is the concept of qualifying your subscribers before they get through, the, you know, very deep into the process. And if you take it to a generic giveaway site, I mean, honestly, do you even know if most of these people are literate? Like it, it, they could just be there for like a free waffle iron or a book. They don't care what it is as long as it's free and someone's going to give it to them. So you want to be careful with that. So let's get into that, shall we? What about these freebie seekers? So there's a couple of ways, two specifically that I like, that work here. Uh, the first one is to run a, what I call, bug spray ad. And I'll break down the logistics of this in just a second. And understand the core uh, phases, let's call them, of uh, th that are involved in list building because it is far, far more involved than just get the subscriber, get the subscriber, send them email, send them email. All right, so in the entire publishing, the, the entire publishing industry has been neglecting this uh, to a very large degree. And most of the time it's been because it, you know, up until the last, say, couple of years, you could kind of get away with not doing it. But because uh, discovery is now completely on your shoulders, it's super important. So this is what it looks like. This is the process. There's five phases that readers go through. And at every single phase, you're going to lose some of them. This is just how it works. There's nothing, you know, I, I know the terror many authors have when someone unsubscribes from their list, but that is how it works. Like this is what you need, this is what you do going forward is you have to un understand that unsubscribes are a natural part of life. It's, like, it's literally like a life cycle. All right, so you start with the genre fans and the readers. And then if they decide they want to make that next step, they're going to become interested subscribers, meaning they are going to sign up to your giveaway. From interested subscribers, you now have an automation that sends them that link. Say, thank you so much. Here, go download your free book or short or whatever you're giving them. And they go and do that. And now they're going to make a decision. So if you see how between each one of these segments, there's a moment where they decide if they're going to move further. And obviously, between uh, in, the, you're going to get the biggest drop-off between potential readers and your readers. Because that's the part where, oh, I, everybody gets a free copy of this? Great. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to hit unsubscribe. Now, between your readers and your fans, that also happens again, but to far less of an extent. Because your fans, those are people who are buying your books. Meaning at number four is where you start to have the conversation about, hey, did you like the free one I sent you? By the way, and this is something you can do, of, uh, you know, very powerful. Because you're one of my VIP subscribers, I wanted to give you the next book in this series at a huge, like a huge discount. You can buy it over here, and I'll talk more about that later. Uh, but then if they choose to purchase, guess what? You've got a buyer, and it's awesome. So you need to be using automation to segment this because you can tag your subscribers based on their behavior. And this is a huge, 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 huge thing that most authors don't think about is if you have people, I'll give you an example. If you have a brand new book that's coming out, you send it to all your subscribers and you have shown them the cover, you have told them what it's about and you've disclosed the price and then you have a link. Even if it's not selling through your own site and it's going to Amazon, you can tag them as uh, that's a buying behavior. So purchase behavior could be the tag or new book purchase behavior or something. And then what you could start doing is creating audiences based around those people. And we'll get into that in a second. But now what you can do is you, the goal of this whole prospecting thing is to get people off of the general mailing list and onto specific segments or even completely new lists that identify them as potential buyers. So you bring in the new leads every single day. And then what you do is using automation, you shuffle them around 
to, you know, from the prospect list to the buyer list to the unsubscribe list and all those different kinds of things. And so that's why we have to do this every single day. And it, once this automation is set up, it just works. All right, so here's some places to promote it. Obviously, your own social media platforms, uh, your newsletter, which is awesome. Uh, book sites that allow you to do that. Do not use those broad giveaway sites. I swear on everything holy. They are just terrible. And then um, you want to have this going 365, uh, 365 days a year. Promote it every single day. And the best way to do that is with paid Facebook ads. Let's have another sip here. Now, I know a lot of folks think, oh, Facebook ads. Yay, this again. Well, what I'm going to show you tonight is how to use them correctly so that they work. The problem that most people have with Facebook ads, I'll get to that in a second, actually. Uh, but the reason we use Facebook is because this is where your readers live, the vast majority of them. You can go and get them like this. You can have amazing targets, not just, and this is really important, you don't just have to target like genre interests and things like that. You can target behavior interests. You can create audience audiences based off of people who interact with you and things like that. So there's lots of different stuff that you can do here. But this is why this is kind of uh, broken down for a lot of authors. And I hear this all the time. It's like, well, I've tried Facebook and they don't work. Well, the reason why is they're typically set up incorrectly or uh, someone's doing like a boosted post. That can work, but it's not really Facebook advertising. That's just boosting a post. Um, also, the other big factor is you need to give these things time. Uh, there's an artificial intelligence that works behind the scene. And it's in everybody's account. Everybody's account's different uh, because everybody wants different things. And so you have to teach this thing what it is you want. There's actually a learning phase now inside of the advertising dashboard that you can see, <coughs> excuse me, where it shows you how far along in the process of learning how to deliver your result it is. And so just keep that in mind is if you stop an ad after a day, it's that that's not helpful at all. Uh, you need to run them for a while. And also you need to run them... Uh, with testing, so you need to have like six of six ads going on at any given time, and really make sure that you're giving. So have multiple ads because you never know which one's going to perform, and this could be particularly interesting if you have extremely branded graphics. I see this all the time. People, uh, you know, authors who will have uh, these extremely nicely done, amazing graphics that showcase their book, and then there's like all these, you know, cool people on them. Well, guess what? Sometimes those things really suck as ads. Uh, pretty is often the enemy of, six, of, of successful. And so you kind of have to be careful with that. I would say test it. Not always, but test that. And then the other thing is most authors are bidding incorrectly. And the reason they're bidding incorrectly is because they don't know, it, it, most don't know how to create an ad that will show you the results that it's delivering. And so very quickly, I'm not going to spend much time on this because I'm sure you already know, but every now and then there's at least one or two folks uh, that, is, that, that asks the question, you know, uh, what do we get per click or, you know, what's the difference between a click and a lead? All right, so a click is when someone just sort of like touches something and it takes them to your site and you don't capture them, they just clicked and went. And a lot of these things can be very accidental. I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but like you're on your phone, scrolling through your news feed, and you kind of get distracted, you look over and next thing you know, oh, I clicked that link and... Now you're standing on like, you know, you're, you're sitting on some like hair care product website going, I have no interest in this and you hit the back button. So that's what that could be. There's a lot of, you know, that's why not clicks don't really turn into leads. Don't worry about your cost per click. And I'll show you something even crazier. If you don't know about Nielsen, they are sort of the big brother of data reporting for the marketing industry. And what they did was after thousands and thousands of tests, you know, millions of dollars spent over tons of time. They have found that there is a 0.07% correlation uh, between a click and a sale, meaning there's no buyer, there's no purchase intent when you bid on clicks. So that's one of the big problems uh, with sending Facebook ads directly to an Amazon page without first doing what I'm about to show you and seasoning your pixel because you can't see what happens after Amazon gets it. So there's a completely different bidding strategy that you have to use. Now, a lead, for example, this is someone, and this is specifically in our case when we do these things, uh, someone who saw the, the advertisement, read the description, found the link, clicked the link, landed on the page, read the page, scrolled down the page, clicked the drop-down menu, entered, selected an answer, verified they were human, entered their email, and then submitted the form. So that's what we call intentionally doing something. You cannot accidentally sub sub subscribe to one of these things. It just does not happen like that. You absolutely can't do that. So what we're talking about is deliberate effort 
versus accidental scrolling. So you want that reader intent. It's very important. And so CPL, that means cost per lead. So your goal, obviously, is to keep the daily spending under control. That's not very hard to set a realistic daily limit. Do not worry about your cost per click. It is completely irrelevant. You want to look at your cost per lead. Now, outside of the reader getting world, you can sometimes be looking at like $7 to $15, uh, sometimes even more, uh, for to get a subscriber. Inside of publishing, to be perfectly honest, depending on genre, like $0.80 cents or less is really good. Below $50 is fantastic. Uh, we often see, because you know, obviously we're doing a ton of testing, it's anywhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 65, but that depends, of, of course, on genres, ad spend, even your ad account, and this, how seasoned and how uh, you know, well you've run the ad account can come into play with this thing. So let's talk about the four deadly mistakes very quickly here, uh, because these are super important that you don't make these. So number one, we talked about this already, is sourcing subscribers from places where everybody wants something for free meaning those big, big freebie sites. You absolutely don't. Number two, not setting up automation to segment the buyers from the freebie seekers. If you are not separating the wheat from the chaff, as they used to say, then you just have this one big sort of like big old list. Now, some people will have like, okay, this is my book funnel. This is my Insta freebie. This is my uh, Facebook ads or whatever it is. And they'll have like boom, boom, boom. And they'll have different lists. But those lists, that, those aren't segments. Those are just tracking traffic sources. You need to further segment within the list themselves. And then this is a huge one, and I cannot, like almost 100% of the authors that we work with, even on an agency level, are not using the Facebook tracking pixel. And if they are using it, it's not being used even slightly correctly. And this can make or break you as an advertiser, as, as, a, as an author who wants to market books and build a platform. And then the other thing is not uh, pushing leads 24-7, 365 to keep the growth going. So those are a bunch of mistakes that are currently being made. And when you're making all of them simultaneously, it's kind of like the death knell. And so you need to be very, very careful with all this so that you can do it right. So once again, remember, this is a process. This takes time. You can set it up to automate it, and you can run paid advertising to it, and then you can just let it happen. But you have to take them from, uh, from being one and move them into five. This is just, this is how it works. And at every single place, at every single juncture, some people are going to make the decision not to continue on the journey. And that's not a bad thing. It's actually a very, very, very good thing. So let's have some expectations when you're running Facebook ads. Let's give you some benchmarks that you can look for, okay? And I'm actually, uh, in just a second, I'm going to take you into an account and show you how to set up one of these ads. But I want to cover these things because... Uh, once again, having worked with so many thousands of authors, we see this literally minutely, it seems like, is you need to, is that they're, you know, you'll start an ad and then freak out because it's not working. That that won't help you at all. So you have to run them for a minimum of five days to even know what's happening. Do not overspend at the start. You want to start off with a small test budget to really get, you know, figure out what you're doing, and then scale up as the winners show themselves. So as you're able to, then you scale. So you're gonna spend 10 to $15 before you even know if a particular ad is going to be working. And here's the other thing is, if you, you have to keep testing, 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 testing. Don't just put up an ad or boost a post, not get the results you want, and then assume that this form of advertising is not for you or doesn't work or won't work with your genre. That's not correct thinking. It's, it's a matter of testing. And this isn't something, this is just how this works. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to concoct a story about this, about advertising on Facebook. Like you have to be running tests. You have to be doing this. If you're not, you're not going to find the winners. If you don't find the winners, you'll naturally assume that it's not working here. And you have to use your Facebook pixel. You have to get this thing right. Um, every, I mean, it's crazy. The, the authors that we work with, it's like, okay, uh, we'll go into their ad account and we'll find that their pixel isn't, he hasn't even really been activated or set up yet. Because this is when... The pixel is what tells Facebook when they have sent you the result that you wanted, when you got the thing that you were asking for. And so this is why most authors think that, that Facebook ads don't work anymore. Because what's happened is that the Facebook advertising platform has evolved beyond the publishing industry's capability of using it. It used to be that you could, you know, you could just send traffic to a page and it, would, and, and it would kind of work itself out. Well, that's not the case anymore because it's now so intelligent 
about sending you the kind of traffic that you want, that if you ask it for a click, which is the wrong kind of traffic to ask for, it'll send you exactly what you want, but it's not what you need. Okay, so it's very important. The platform is super powerful. It's probably the most advanced uh, we've ever had as humans at this point, and it's only getting better from here. And let me show you now how to cut down on these freebie seekers with what I like to call bug spray. Take another little sip before we dive into this one. It has to do with using the Facebook pixel. It has to do with using what are called custom audiences, all right? So I want you to now shift your focus away from interest targeting. Most authors we know of uh, are going to be focusing on interests, meaning uh, uh, bigger name authors who have a following, you can target their following, that kind of stuff. That's Facebook 101 kind of thing. And that's great. That's a great place to start. But what you want to start doing is as you get bigger and grow and you start to have more assets in your business, like a platform, you can start looking at behavior targeting. And so one of these things is you could start working on the behaviors of these freebie seekers. And so what would be some behaviors that you might think? And just think about them right now, and I'll, I'll kind of give you a few of them. Right, unsubscribe right after they join. They jump in, they download the book, and then they bounce. And you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, they were just in there for that free book. They have no interest in you whatsoever. All right, what's another one? If they hit spam, exactly. So if they hit spam, if they bounce, and if they go dormant, like immediately, or if you can't get them at all. Okay, so what are you going to do with this, folks? So what are you going to look for with those behaviors? So what you want to do is get a list of people who unsubscribe when you send a sales promo, especially a discounted one. You want to get another list of people that unsubscribe immediately after they download the your free book. And if you can, get a list of people who hit the spam button. Now what you do is you upload these people into Facebook's custom audience. And uh, I'll, I'll sh it's very, very simple to do that. You just go into the audiences, hit custom audience and upload. And then what you're going to do is they're going to run them as an exclusion custom audience. And so as soon as you upload them, th they'll ask you if you want to make a lookalike audience. And you absolutely say yes. And you keep it at 1%. Now, why would you do this? Why would you put these people in here? Well, because remember, what we're doing is we are going to be working on behavior targeting. And so the ideal goal is you want to you want to go for the people who have the right kind of behavior, meaning the people that if you run an ad in your newsletter to these people to go buy your new book and they click the link, that shows purchase intent. Now, if you're going to Amazon, you have no idea whether or not they actually bought from you, but that's okay. This is good enough for now. This is good enough for now. And so what you do is don't, don't import the entire newsletter. You want to have this segmented into different ways. And so you only export then those who say click this link and you could say new release purchase intent and then you go make an audience out of them. You make a 1% lookalike audience out of them. Then when you run your ad, and I'll show you how to do this in, uh, I'll literally show you exactly how to set up an exclusion audience in just a second when we go into the ad account. And so you have your main target and then you have your exclude. And what's awesome is you'll see typically there's like 2.1 million people that are created from each audience. And where those things overlap, those people from the exclusion audience will be removed from your marketing. And so this is how you can get rid of people who are more likely to display behaviors you do not want on your list. So hopefully that's making sense. That's called a bug spray ad. And this is why people who unsubscribe from your list are absolute rock stars. Because you can use them to have better marketing. You can use them to get rid of that kind of stuff. And it, it's not something that you're going to completely get rid of. That's an impossibility. But you can dramatically reduce the kind of people that you do not want subscribing to your stuff. All right? So that's how you do it. So let me show you what can happen when you set these things up correctly because then your cost per lead, your effectiveness, all this stuff just goes way up. And you can see we're running some here that were uh, 34 cents. Uh, you can see when we're doing testing of different placements, we have 20 uh, to 35 cents. <clears throat> 13 it was awesome. Uh, 18, 15. So the overall, when you can, when you put them together, was uh, 16. Uh, this one, the winner was four cents. We got over 1,400 subscribers there for less than a freaking nickel on that. Now this one, this is something slightly different. I wanted to just take a fast second 
and show you the power of the pixel. Now, the reason we know what, what it cost us to acquire those leads uh, in the previous ones was because we have the pixel set up correctly. Like when we work with people, that's what we do. Because the last thing that we're ever going to do is like, you know, someone asks us, well, how are we doing? It's like, I have no idea. Well, that's what most people say when they run ads because they have no idea. They don't know how important that pixel is. Now, why, let's look at this for a second. Why are all of these turned off? Like this is actually running right now uh, for one of our agency clients. And I just, like I said, I just want to show this to you as an example of why the pixel is so important. Now, it, the cost per lead at this point is 49 cents. Now, that's not the cheapest lead, right? That's not the that that's not the best cost per lead. So why is that the one running? Well, I'd like to you to look at this. So this is what happens when you can see the activity going on on your website. So we had people. Uh, so website content views. What that means is those are the number of people that clicked on the ad and went to the page, and they let the page load so they could see it. Now of that, we have uh, three hundred and eighty-seven people subscribe. And so that cost us 49 cents uh, per lead on average to get those people. But here's, here's what's even cooler. Check that out. Because we're using sales on our own site, we're able, to, and we have an upsell right after this. So it's a very simple process that we use. Uh, essentially, they subscribe. And we're like, thank you so much. Your free book is on its way to you. By the way, while you're here, you can get an exclusive discount on this page only. And of that, we had 11 people purchase that book. And then we had another one, which was an upsell, which is kind of like, hey, you know, you bought the hamburger, which like fries with that, where it's uh, where we sell them the box set at a, at a nice discount. And so we're able to then generate even more revenue on this particular one. And this ad had the most purchases. And so what that means is now we don't just have buyer intent. We've got actual freaking buyers. And this is what happens when you can see what's going on. This is what happens when you have set up your ads correctly and you're using the right data tracking and all those things. And like I said, you cannot see this information if you're selling only on Amazon because uh, Amazon will not allow you to track like this. Uh, but when you start doing it through your own site and you start growing your ecosystem like uh, most authors, well, not most authors, but authors are now beginning to realize they have to. But this is why we have to evolve the ad process. So if you're building your platform and you're not using these techniques, it, it's just not going to work. This is why so many authors are frustrated with freebie seekers and crappy newsletters is because they're not doing the segmentation. And so, you know, this is where let's, uh, how about we go to Facebook? Let's see this. Let me take another sip of the stuff here so we can get into this. All right, let me pop out of the har, jump into this. Okay, um, so we have ad accounts for almost every single genre that we work with, uh, you know, with our own ecosystems and stuff. And oh, this is actually a really important caveat. <clears throat> as I cough, you are going to, if you say you write in multiple genres, you are going to want to set up a brand new ad account for every single genre. Do not mix the pixel. It will confuse the crap out of the artificial intelligence. So if you, for example, are writing science fiction and you go over to like action thriller, but set in present day stuff, you totally want to have a brand new ad account. So, um, okay, let's see where we're going here. And so this is just one. I, I, if I had to think about it, I think I have close to 30 right now. You can have up to 50 ad accounts before you have to reach out to Facebook and ask for more. And then they'll give you 2,000. I'm not kidding. There are people with 2,000 ad accounts. It's nuts. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to set this up so you can promote these things. Now, normally most people are going to do like, you know, an engagement, like a boost post or something like that or send traffic. Not you. You're going to do this. Now, this is another big point. You want to have a recognizable file structure, or I'm sorry, a file name structure for each one of these things. So we do it like, and, and here's the thing, if we're, we're managing so many different author ad accounts, and sometimes they're running their own ads for different reasons and things, so we need to be able to instantaneously identify which ones we need to be concerned with. And so we'll go APR, and we'll call this VK giveaway, uh, and then this is just a demo. Oh, what? This is the first time we're doing it. So we'll hit continue. And so what we did was, I would love to be able to focus on a purchase, but in this particular case, we're going to do this. We're going to focus on a lead because our goal is to grow these things. Now, with the ad set name, I like to typically, and this is just an example, like I said, but we're going to go to LA, so that means lookalike, and then we are going to say something like um, buyers, neg, LA, unsubs. 
and then 25 to 65 because I know my audience and stuff like that. Now, normally you can go in here and you're going to do something like, and this is uh, the example I'm going to show you in just a second. It's going to be paranormal romance. Uh, so we're, we would typically go like J.R. Ward, and you're trying to look for, you know, here's the Black Dagger Brotherhood, yay, suggestions, you know, Frost, Kenyon, all these people. These are all paranormal romance authors and stuff like this. Now, what's interesting is Facebook is kind of having a tough time right now uh, showing you the actual numbers of people. Now, you can still do this. You can still do this. And so if you don't have really good custom audiences that you can use yourself, that's fine. But just for this demo here, and then also you need to know the demographics of your readers. Uh, mine will be, we usually get the best uh, from 25 to 65. And then we're gonna go into here and you do this. Come on. We go to look like audiences. And let's just say we're gonna go to, <clears throat> let's just say, let's find some readers. Here you go, reader clicks on, uh, these are people who were clicking on uh, paid books that were more than $2.99. Now let's exclude some of these folks. And I have not, uh, this is just, like I said, a demo, and I have not uploaded a, uh, an exclusion. But you can see here, we have 1.8 million people right now. So watch what happens when we exclude something. Uh, let's do reader. Um, reader buyer fan swag. Let's just say that's something we don't want. See, that took us down. Let's, let me do that again here. We went from 1.8 million people, reader, buyer, fans. But we'll pretend those are the people who uh, unsubscribed, you know, right there. And you would probably run all three as exclude. So we're excluding these people. So it took 400,000 people out of that audience that are more than likely going to exhibit the kind of behavior that we do not want. Uh, to engage with our ads. And so that's how that works. This, so this is how you set up the bug spray. And whatever your budget is, uh, minimum of $3 a day kind of thing. I'll just leave it here because I'm not actually going to publish this ad. Now, a seven-day window, what does that mean? That means that the, the, this is going to, the, the AI is going to look at a seven-day rolling kind of window to see where, when people subscribe because they don't always, it doesn't always happen at the same day. So you can absolutely keep that where, right where it is. Keep your placements right where it is. Let's go Victoria. Victoria Knight, um, we have no reason for this. We'll just run it on that. And so now what we're gonna do is we need to have a link to this thing. So this is, this is what we're doing uh, with the program currently. And so this is just a demo site. And so one thing that you'll wanna see here is, uh, regardless of where you are in the world, GDRP, Europe, whatever it is, you have to have a uh, cookie notice now, it's like, hey, we use cookies. That's what these things are for. And they hit, yes, got it. And then have a link to your privacy policy. So that's something that we've had to customize uh, the, you know, our particular stuff for. And then I want to kind of go down this thing because what we're doing here is, you can see, big old headline tells them exactly what they're going to get. Uh, we're giving away this Veiled series. And everybody who enters gets a free digital copy via Victoria Knight's newsletter. Yay. When you're entered, you'll automatically be signed up, which is free. See contest rules for our privacy policy and all those kinds of fun things. Country and age restriction. Good stuff there. Uh, then it talks about the book. And then it, this is a, literally, there is nothing here that is hidden that is written in small letters or anything like that. And so it links to the privacy policy. Uh, you know, and it says, hey, you're going to be on the mailing list. You do not enter the contest. However, you have the option to unsubscribe. And then right here, because uh, if you're familiar with the GDRP, we actually exclude anyone from the EU. So these things are available only to residents of the United States uh, and sometimes Canada who are 18 years of age or older. And then they have to come down here, answer a question, and then, only then, will this form show up. And now we are able to collect first name and email, and all of this stuff is, is totally on point uh, with everything that's happening. So anyway, I wanted to show you that so I could grab the link here and we could put this, rahar. And for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna browse the library uh, for more of these things. I mean, we'll just use whatever we have, because uh, like I said, this is just a demo, but you wanna have uh, 1200 by 628 would be your best size. And let's see if we've got some more spicy looking things. Yeah, so of course this is paranormal romance and all those good things uh, we've done 
oceans and oceans of ads at this point, as you might have guessed. All right, so you can run six. I highly recommend running six. And we have those things there. Like I said, I just doubled that up. Let's make this copy a little bit more sexy. Um, so I'm just going to take that top piece. Best selling author Victoria Knight. $50 gift card to lucky winners. Perfectly fine. All right, we'll stick with that. And let's see. And we're going to say, because everybody wins, subscribe for your free copy now. And then you can even go subscribe. Or because you have the subscribe button, you could change that to say everyone who enters gets a free copy. No overlay, don't need that. Um, here, let's, in fact, let's go and look at it. Boom, boom, boom. So that is a perfectly effective ad, and what we're doing is we're running six of them, and we're just going to uh, test and that kind of good stuff. So there we go, and we have the Facebook pixel. Uh, there you go, your ad may not be too much text in the ad image. Um, what's funny about that, oh, that's what they're talking about is this one here. Uh, they don't like text in the ad image at all. So see, now that fixed it up right away. So we have our pixel set up, and then what you do is you hit confirm, and that goes into review, and then it starts running, and that's literally it. Now I'm gonna show you what happens after somebody joins. So this was, uh, I had to jump into Firefox here, and you could see this, but here's what's cool about this is these things are building the entire platform, and we didn't set up a BookBub for this particular one, but you could do that too. So follow on Amazon, follow on BookBub, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, wherever it is, and they get more points for doing that. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, the reason is because the more places they see you, the more front of mind you become. And yes, while social media is not your idea, is not your ideal uh thing or your place to be uh, to build your platform because the email is, it is very helpful as a secondary. Amazon is kind of amazing and the reason why is because when you publish a book on Amazon, they end up mailing your followers that you just published a book on that. Now the other piece of this that you want to do is this is where the lead pixel fires. This is not hard to do because what you want to do here is you go through here, this is the Facebook pixel code and you make sure that fires right there. If this thing is here, it's going to tell you that you're doing okay. And you can and you can just kind of go through that. So there you go. That's what, you know, hopefully that was helpful. You got to see how to set up a bug spray ad and all those fun things. Let's get back into it. And remember, you just keep testing these things, okay? Keep testing, keep testing, keep testing. So let's recap this really quickly. Um, your 100% of your focus outside of writing books is going to be building your subscriber base. And then you build your secondary, meaning your social platform as a secondary. You want to use a giveaway with an enhanced everybody wins to draw them in. And then you follow up. You yet have to use your segmentation with this. And so you're going to segment them out of your lists based on their behavior as you move through this automation. So don't just broadcast stuff to them. Have a follow-up sequence. And then even, at, so it, and it should be, a, you know, maybe two weeks long where they're getting maybe two emails a week or something like that. You want to run paid Facebook ads to your giveaway. You want to use your pixel so that you know what's working. You have to run each ad for at least five to seven days. You're going to spend, you know, between each ad group, you'll spend about 10 to $15 at a really low budget before you can make any kind of judgment call. And you want to keep testing. We've seen the cost per lead drop from $2 down to 40 cents through testing, through just constantly, okay, that didn't work, let's adjust this. Okay, that didn't work, let's adjust this. Okay, that didn't work, let's adjust this. So this is, this is what we've been doing all of this time. And what you do is when you find the stuff that's working, you just turn off the losers and then you scale the winner. So you, put, you, you incrementally increase the budget on that back end. So that's how you do it. Now, you always want to watch out. Like I was very specific to show you tonight, Facebook can change its terms of service. All sorts of things out there um, are changing all the time. So it's important to kind of stay on top of that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's all very easy 
to be perfectly in line with what they're looking for. And then you want to you want to adjust your ads based on what's working from one week to the next, you know. So if something radically changes with like say an algorithm or, you know, a certain ad group stops working, well then you go into a different ad type. And so yeah, just remember to test. You know, just really remember to test. I think that's the biggest takeaway here is test, 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 test. And it can take a long time. Like there's been times before where it's taken four months to sometimes locate a winner. Like we've had folks who've come to us in extremely obscure genres that literally have, there's no category for it, but through consistently testing and like overlaying different audiences, we've been able to, that was actually the example I gave it. We took it, it was almost $3 a lead actually. Uh, and we were able to get them down to uh, very, uh, it was like 40, 42 cents or something like that. It was, it was just very crazy and amazing. Or you could just let us do everything for you, uh, which can in many, many cases save thousands of dollars in failed tests, uh, save you having to buy a ton of online courses and years of frustration uh, because this is literally what we do. We build platforms for authors, uh, hence the name, Author Platform Rocket. Uh, and two, uh, since we started doing this, we've worked with more than 500 authors and distributed over 3 million subscribers uh, for this. And this, uh, uh, this uh, manifestation of the program has been evolving uh, for quite some time. It's called Author Platform Rocket Ultimate, and that's it builds your entire platform beginning with the most vital, which is your email address. So you can see some of the ones uh, that we've done here with... Uh, some of the numbers that we've been able to pull in on these things. And Travis sent this. It was absolutely great. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. Uh, but when he finally got in here, and what's great is we were able to uh, fix this problem by directly connecting these things to your autoresponder. Uh, so whatever service you have, we can make it work either with direct connection or using a zap. Um, but uh, he got some great results from this. And the one line I like on this one is, my only gripe is that I wish you'd started doing this a year ago. And most people, uh, when we work with them, that's that's what we tell us. So what APR Ultimate does for authors is this is the only total platform building service in existence that will literally do all of the marketing for you on this. We focus on growing your subscriber base via paid Facebook ads. And once your readers confirm, they're then given the opportunity. So it's a double opt-in process. So it's very nice and secure and verified. Uh, no bots, which is awesome. Uh, so they're given the opportunity to then follow you on Amazon because as we discussed earlier, Amazon will email them when you publish a new book. So BookBub, other social media accounts, pretty much anything that you're doing. Uh, and it's an ongoing evergreen, meaning it runs 365, 24-7, perpetual service that pushes targeted reader traffic and grows your list your email list every single day. Like, like I said, this is directly connected to your autoresponder. Uh, the leads are not shared with anybody. You don't have to wait for an export to then import them in. It is just a consistent flow of people. We do all of the graphics. We actually have a complete graphics department. We take care of all the social promotion graphics as, along with uh, the ad graphics and everything. We create, set up, manage your paid Facebook ads. So we'll do all of this work for you. We will uh, take care of your pixel. Uh, we'll take care of doing the custom audiences. And we're going to monitor and we're going to adjust these settings to keep your subscribers uh, as, you know, to, to bring the cost down as we do more and more and more testing. So like I went through on this uh, training tonight is you have to test the ads. And so we will take care of that for you so you don't have to sit there and micromanage this stuff uh, because it's on a daily basis. And this is run through your Facebook account. And so you, these are your ads, your audiences. Everything is dedicated specifically to you. And also, we do not target outside the United States with paid traffic. And uh, also, one of the main reasons we are also GDPR and Facebook terms of service compliant. So we run cookie disclosures on all the pages. We have a dedicated privacy policy on every giveaway. Uh, easy to understand language. I showed you that just a little bit ago. So readers know exactly what they're signing up for. They are complete and total, utter disclosure of absolutely everything. These are not multi-author giveaways. You have your own dedicated page on our uh, secure servers. And we only run ads in the United States and exclude the EU and the UK from entering. And so that is why this stuff is uh, totally up to snuff with everything that's going on right now. So what can you expect? Let me talk really quickly about the process that we go through here. So during the first 30 days, uh, we're, you know, when, you, when you join, there is an intake form that you'll get right after that. I'll talk about that in a second. So the minute we get that form, uh, we're going to be able to go to work to be able to build this 
giveaway for you uh, to set up your offer, to get you a unique page, to get your graphics cooking, to connect your ad account, your Facebook page. And then once you're set up and once you sign off on everything, we get going. So uh, we'd like to give ourselves a full 30 days just in case we have a ton of people come in at once. However, if uh, a lot of times we're able to fire these things up much, much faster. And so your ad spend is going to be in your ad account, so it's based on your budget. Our minimum is $3 a day. And so that'll be run, like I said, through your ad account. But we also have authors doing over $100 a day. So the sky is the limit, whatever you want to do. And like I said, you get uh, real readers with this. I mean, we're doing very specific targeting. We're going to be doing exclusion targeting based on those kinds of things too, if you have that data. Uh, if you don't, then you'll develop it over time and we can then begin to improve the ads and stuff like that. And traditionally, the open rates with these things have been well above industry averages, uh, even as high as 89.1%. And then every 90 days, so this is a perpetual giveaway, every 90 days, the, the giveaway resets and our system sends you a message that says, hey, it's time to set out your prizes. Uh, here are the three winners. And then you can take care of that. So that basically means that only four times a year you even have to deal with this. The rest of the time it goes on complete autopilot. Like once this thing is set up, we will take care of it. You literally don't have to do anything. Um, so how many subscribers could you expect? Now that question is very much comes down to a few things. And that is what is your budget? Obviously someone running $100 a day could expect to get a few more subscribers than someone running $3 a day. It also depends on what are you offering them? What's your genre? Uh, for example, in romance, the subscribers are typically less expensive because there's tons of them. They're, they're all over the place uh, versus in something like science fiction, which is a little bit more expensive. So uh, our goal is to get somewhere between 16 and 79. And then we keep and that, you know, per gross subscriber. And we keep working that to see if we can beat it and things like that. So that's how it works. So it's not how many. It's what's your budget. And then these things take time to optimize. And so that was a big point of uh, this, this uh, webinar is to make sure that everybody's on the same page that this stuff, you don't just turn on an ad and have it work. That's not how it works. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge misconception. Uh, can you cancel? Absolutely, there's no commitments whatsoever. Now there's a caveat to this though. If you just wanna try it for a week, it's not worth doing. That's not the right mindset. This is not a program for you. You're not ready for it. That's okay. I get it, but this isn't for you. We're here for serious authors who are going to be able to uh, emotionally, let's say, commit for a minimum of four months. That way you can allow for the ads to optimize. You can get a good optimization through this and we can really get that lead cost down. Like I said before, even if you're in a very obscure genre, we're usually able to figure out who to target and how to target them. We could build you a platform based on people that really like your stuff. Uh, we were able to do that. We brought uh, one fellow who there was not even a category on Amazon for what he was doing. And through testing and tweaking and testing and tweaking and letting it run and optimize and testing and tweaking some more, we got him down from over, uh, it was almost $3 a lead down to uh, just over 40 cents. And so there's a huge difference, but it takes some time to get there. So unless your ad account already has a lot of history and a lot of good data, uh, it might take some time to get there. So what to expect? Like I said, right after you join, Please fill out that intake form as soon as possible. If you have any questions, email us at sponsorships at authorplatformrocket.com. And after that form is submitted, we'll kick it off. And we'll what we're going to do is verify the prices with you and make sure that we can help you optimize your program in the best way possible. So that way you're not overspending on prizes or anything like that. So how much is this service? That's a huge question. Well, a normal ad agency uh, that is normally going to begin somewhere in the $5,500 a month range, uh, plus the cost of ads. And that is obviously totally unattainable for most authors. That's why we've created this program the way we have. It's actually less than $7 a day, plus the cost of ads. So it's 197 a month, plus the cost of ads, and then whatever your, uh, you know, your, uh, your prizes are going to be in that kind of thing, uh, which is usually a nominal expense because we help you whittle that down. So it's very, 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 very affordable uh, to, to use this program. So you can join now. Uh, you can go to authorplatformrocket.com forward slash live, and you can read all about uh, what this program is, what other folks have said about it, and those kinds of things. And uh, one bonus that we're giving you is when you join, you're going to get access to 12 uh, live recorded webinars where we teach you how to do all of the automation that we talked about in this plus ongoing support. So this is uh, once again, 100% done for you platform building service. Uh, we're super excited to have you inside. Go to authorplatformrocket.com slash live. Join today. All right, and I'll see you on the inside. Have a good one. I'm Johnny Andrews. Thank you so much for attending.